Hello everyone. I welcome you to Time Out with Honesty Creed. Like I said, I have a very important friend with me today, Franklin Edwards. He doesn't need introduction. God has introduced him. And I thank God for that which God has done with him. And he's going to share with us today some experience. Because sometimes we think when someone has made it or God has brought somebody to a certain level, we think the person just jump into that which he had without knowing that everybody went through a process. I happen to see some of them and I know what I'm talking about. So I thank God for his life. So, sir, you are welcome. Thank you, sir. To time out. Thank you. Thank God you. bless you, sir. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege. And um, I thank God for you being today. I look forward to this. Thank you. Same here. Thank God that you are here today. Thank God. And the thank name God. of the Lord be glorified. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So today we want to start with asking the journey so far in music. How did this all, this wonderful, magnificent thing that God has been doing, how did it start? Was it that maybe, I don't know, maybe you tell us. Um, well, um, it's been quite a journey, I must say, and I want to thank you for having me. It's, I, thank you, sir. I don't take it for granted at all. Thank you for um, being instrumental to changing how people appreciate gospel music in Nigeria and in Africa at large. You know, I say it everywhere I go. You know, um, what you did, nobody could have done it. And, you know, many people and gospel uh, music ministers is the entire gospel music ministry in Nigeria is riding on the surface of the groundwork that you have already done. You know, you made it easy for people in rural areas, for people in inner city to have a copy, to, to get gospel music. You know, before it was difficult, it's either they hear it on radio. And how many people in those days have radio and TV? But you know, you made it possible for these cities to reach all the crooks and countries everywhere and circulated it Africa, Nigeria, everywhere. And um, I think that's what birthed the appreciation of gospel music in Nigeria and in Africa today. So I must say congratulations and thank you for you know, answering the call. Thank you very much, sir. And then coming to my journey, it's, it's been an interesting journey. I started to play the piano at the age of seven, you know. I started to play the piano at seven, not it's, an instrument I just loved because um, how did I get the piano? I went to we went to visit my cousin, myself and my mom and my family. So when I got there, I noticed my cousin had this small wooden piano because wow. I never had a toy. No toy got. I mean, wow. it's when you've eaten now that you buy toy, right? Wow. <laughs> you know. So I never had a toy. My childhood, I had never. I never owned any toy as a child. So when we went visiting my cousin, we saw, I saw this small wooden piano, just about one octave. So I played with it, but when it was time for us to leave, I started dragging the piano with my cousin. Wow. So we were fighting, and then his mom just came out and said, if I just leave it for him, I'll buy you another one. And that was how I got my first piano. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the, the Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by, by force. force. <laughs> so that was how I got my first piano. So I was, you know, fiddling with it. Anybody who visits us, I say, Uncle Singh, I can play for you. Wow. And that was it. You know, so I was just playing. I remember then, you know, my uncle put me on the newspaper because I could, anything you think I could play it just mm -hmm. from head. And I was only seven. Just that one octave? Just one octave. You wow. Know, I usually play then, love, one, two, three. Then, you know, it was, <laughs> All those I, things. I, yeah, you know, it was, it was, that was it for me. And um, so as I began to, you know, grow up, I joined the Youth Fellowship Band in Enugu, okay. Anglican Youth Fellowship Band. I was the, I was the keyboard player. In fact, I was attending the band rehearsal as a young boy. They never allowed me play because when they said the keyboard, the keyboard is here, my head is here. So it's, you know, so, but one day I kept coming. So one day they had a rehearsal and the keyboardist didn't show up. So they were rehearsing. It was, after, it was like an hour into the rehearsal, they noticed that I have been playing with them. Wow. Yeah, they didn't know I have been playing with them. So 
We were still waiting for their keyboardists. They just didn't Not knowing that God have sent them one. They didn't know. I mean, one day would I, so for for my for my plane to blend, that means there was no error. So that was how they bounced the other keyboardists. They never allowed him play again. Wow. You know, yes, you know, so I joined the Anglican Youth Fellowship Band and I was playing before, you know, I moved to Lagos to live with my uncle. I joined the um, Christ Embassy. And I think that's the point where I met you. Yeah, yeah. That's the point where I met yes. you because after I released my first album, The Definition, it was just released, you know, like within the church. And, you know, just, you know, quite a number of people know the music. So... One day, you know, somebody told me about you. I think we met in church or so. Yeah, I think in church. And then you said to me, I heard you you have some music album you want to use. I said, I don't have anything. And the reason is because I didn't think that the music was good enough. I remember when we were trying to repackage that definition yeah. for sale. And then you asked me to play some of the songs. So I was playing, and I now played Mama. I now said to you, this is the last song I recorded. I didn't want to add it to the album because I felt That's like... That's the Unlimited. Yes, it, that was the Unlimited. Yes. I said to you, the recording was not good enough. And then you said I should add it. I said, I don't like the song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like wow. it. It doesn't sound up to standard. You actually forced me to add Mama on that album. Wow. I never wanted to, to add it. You know, wow. so what am I saying? You know, when, by the time you came in and began to distribute the music, I'll just be walking along the road. People are driving to me, are you Frank Edwards? I say yes, wow. and they, they wind down and they increase the volume of their play. I say, can you hear your music? Wow. I say, yes, I can hear. And it they was, everywhere. Off. It was yeah. everywhere. So the music was everywhere until I almost became, it was almost a problem to walk on the road. Because hmm. then I was coming up, no car, I was still trekking. Yeah. So I'll be trekking, I see people playing my music and they are riding. So they would just wind down, can you hear your music? I say I can hear and they zoom off. <laughs> you know, so that, you know, continued hap to happen and the music began to, the first, I think that the, the, the first um, one million, or two million I had, I think you are the one who paid it. Yeah. Yeah, during that yeah. album. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, when well, in fact, more than that, yeah. I think it was more than that. Three point the the truth is that when you gave me that contract, you know, at that time, I haven't, I haven't seen, I didn't have a uh, hundred thousand naira of my own. Wow. I never had. Then my salary was 25,000. Wow. Yeah. So, as a I church, didn't know this. Yes, I was a church staff and my salary was 25,000. At that time, I was a church staff. Wow. You know, so when you brought that contract, you know, like when you bring a contract, immediately I Look saw I saw the figure. <laughs> I just signed. I didn't bother to I didn't bother wow. to read it, you know. <laughs> but thank God it wasn't a bad contract because yes. I would have, you know. So I just, you know, and then when you paid that money, it was um turn around for me because I didn't believe you you paid that money. I thought, ah, this man that is coming to make big promises. And can you just give me three point something million just like that? And then and then the money came and then I think the music started to spread. Started to spread. But one thing was, you know, profound. Um, I didn't think you were doing business at that time. I think you were doing ministry. Yeah. Because the money you spent was more than what you got. I think, you know, because you went ahead, you shot the videos. Yeah. You know, we shot uh, Organedo. We shot Organedo. We you shot Oya, and then the the promotion you did for the album it was everywhere. All the printings, all you know. So at some point, I started asking myself, like, is it doing business or is it doing ministry? <laughs> Actually, people ask me that, even other musicians. Yeah. They were like, "Are you a marketer? Because what you are doing is not marketing." Other musicians was coming to me. How can you do that? How are you doing that? I remember when, when what you told me is that it's um, if you wanted to do business, you knew exactly what to do. But this is more ministry for you, more than it is. I think I have to talk a little about that. Yeah, it, you said it was more ministry for you, more than it was business. That you just want to spread the gospel. You know how God asked you to stop what you were doing, to you know. Going to, I mean, 
and then and then you didn't just say it I actually saw it before you said it because the way you were going at a, about everything and then that's how it all started you know when I go anywhere people know me when I visit places and before you know it I started getting wow. you know invitations everywhere everywhere in the world before you know it the music is across the border of Africa before you know it is everywhere wow. in Europe America it's you know the music it's everywhere so it's been quite a journey and I must say you are you came in at the turning point of my life the truth is that if we never made that decision that time yeah I don't know what I'll be doing now yeah do you understand? Yes, you may be talented, you may be anointed, but you see there are a point in time that, that God connects you to vision helpers yeah. who actually make the vision work. They may not be the si know how to sing, or know, but they are gifted in that area to translate that talent into something that the whole world wants to see. And I think that's where you came in and made wow. all the difference. I'm privileged to be able to do that. Because actually... Um, my own journey was like, I was, when I came to Lagos, actually, I was selling spare parts. I learned a spare part, and I was selling spare parts. But I love music. So I keep listening to music, I keep listening to music. Sometimes I will, on my own, go to DJs and try to put some music together, which is gospel. Yeah. Because before I gave my life to Christ, I was in the club. So one thing I loved was music. So when I came into the church, one thing I loved was music. So I go to different functions gospel functions they are playing secular music so within me i was like don't they hear all the good music that i've been hearing all the king franklin all the people all the cc winers all the mary mary and everything. don't they hear that you know so i will go and uh, meet a dj on my own make selections record it and even give it to my pastor then and he listened to one of them and came to me and said wow how did you do this I said, I just love music. But that was it. For me, it's just a passion. It's just yeah. love. So I started doing that. And we started a program in the church called um, Thursday Showers in Fountain of Life Church, precisely. You know, the pastor loved me. I dance. And uh, he loved me so much. Sometimes when I'm dancing, he would take me from where I was dancing and brought, bring me to the pulpit. I should come and stay in the pulpit alone and be dancing so that people can watch me. And people, when after the service, people will, the way you dance, the way you love music, what is happening? Are you in this world? But I was selling spare parts. So I knew that I have something to do with music growing up. Yeah. So but at a point in time, I, I, what happened was, we had that Thursday showers. And the musician was playing, I was dancing. At a point in time, I closed my eye, I was dancing. Suddenly, it was blank. I couldn't see anything again. I was on the floor. And I had a voice. That voice said, honesty. Music. I, when I, I regained consciousness, I was like, how come? Um, what is honesty? I don't know what it's all about. You know, like the vision of God. I went to God and began to ask questions. I began to ask questions. And God began to reveal to me that that is the assignment that is given to me. Mm. That is a mandate that is given to me concerning gospel music. But I look at myself selling paper hats, gospel music. I don't have anybody I can look up to that I know. I have a few shops where I can be able to source some of the uh, music I was uh, playing and, yep. you know, but... To go into it and do it, I don't know where to start from. I don't know how to do it. Actually, I looked at it, that period, and at a point in time, I said, maybe God wants me to sing. So I opened a, a, a office, which didn't work out. I got into a shop, which didn't work out. And I said, maybe God wants me to sing. So I went to the studio, and I, people were singing. I was just preaching. I love preaching. My own is to preach. So I was just saying the word of God where people were just preaching, were just singing. singing. So at a point in time, that was what happened. To cut it short because of our time, I get into the market after getting married. I asked God what I should do. God said, go to Alaba International Market. What we are doing on the street is not what I called you. Go to the market. You know, like every other man, I went to the market. 
but I wasn't seeing it. I wasn't understanding what I'm going there to do. Because for me to go to the market actually was by instructions. After the, my wedding, God gave us a promise saying, when I turn the captivity of Zion, they're like them that dream dreams. Mm -hmm. So I looked at it after the revelation that God gave to me that period is go to Alaba. I don't have money. I don't know what to do. I told my wife from today, I have to go to Alaba. That was how I went into Alaba without nothing. I go the first day, when they had the second one, the third day, and I met somebody that said he knows me. The Alaba people used to come to my shop to buy CD, to go and pirate. That time, some of the guys that were into piracy then, you know, they would come to my shop, and some of us, they would buy the original CD, they would take it to Singapore, and they replicate it. That was what was happening. So, one of them saw me, he said, I know you, but I don't know him. He said, I know you, in that shop, in that place, I said, wow. He said, I wanted you to do something for me, one or two things. You know, I went in to help him do one or two things, and before you know it, God started blessing me. But you see, at a point in time then, I was focusing more of making money. And God was giving me enough money. I was making money. I began to bring some messages of different pastors then, and I was selling them. And I was making money. I was able to grow. Within six months to one year, it became something I never planned. But you see, that's why I tell people, following God and hearing from God is the best thing that can ever happen to anyone. Yeah. Along that period, the Lord made me to know. He said to me, that is not what I called you to do. I didn't call you to just come and make money. I called you to touch lives. I called you to go into this artist and begin to market their music. Wow, I didn't know where to start from. But I'm this person that if God asks me to do anything, I damn the consequences. I don't care what happens. I jump into it without knowing the repercussions, without thinking, just like a fool. Mm. So that's how I went. I stopped doing what I was doing that was giving me money. And I said, I'm going to begin to market most of the artists. And they must be gospel music mm. because it's an instruction. So when I started, some people were coming to me. And I, I put money to them. Some of them I spent millions. Some of them I spent like that time I spent like five million. And it just went down the drain. I was still looking for artists here and there. Then I got one that looks like that is it. But it was not it. And um, so I was approached by uh, the Christ Embassy, their love word ministry that time. You know, headed by Edda Moses and the Evangel, they called me and they wanted me to. Uh, they have some artists they want to be doing their work, and that was what is happening. So they want somebody outside that can be able to to sell the product. Yeah. They may have this music; they don't know what to do with it. But uh, they met one of my friends, Kinsilike, the singer Kinsilike, that sang Wamile Wamile. Yes. So I did this album then, trying to. I put my hand in so many artists; it didn't work. So. I met the, I had a meeting with them and they gave me the songs, I played them. When I played, not only your job, every other person, but when I played Definition, I said, that is it. I said, that is the music. I called them, I said, that is the music. And I said, no, it's not better than this. And I said, that is the music. And uh, by special grace of God, we started. But you see, by the time we started, it was like, how do we do this? Yeah. <clears throat> but God helped us. From there, we progressed to um, Unlimited. Yeah. When Unlimited came around, you know, it's like I have never had a music that touched my soul like that work. I was so impressed with definition because of all that was in it. You know, um, uh, it had a, um, it should they bless it me. It bless me. That they just performed by the creed. Yeah. Uh, it had a, oh, me, my. oh, me, my, oh, Jesus Christ. When I had that song, my head just turned and everything. But when I had the album Unlimited, it was like I was out of this world. Something came inside of me. Hallelujah. And the Lord ministered to me, said, this Frank, I'm making him your brother. Follow him and make sure 
that whatever it will take, this album must reach everybody in the world. Even when I was making the offer, I didn't know how to get the money. Because actually, I didn't have the money. I have, I have had money that I have spent on trying to pick artists from here and there. But when I got the one that I actually loved, that I said, yes, this is it, it was difficult for me. There was no money. But you know, I give you dates. I'm going to pay. Yeah. Two days to that date, I don't have the money. But I keep looking up to God. I said, God, help me. How do I get this money? Just like a miracle. Somebody called my wife and said, is there a problem that she feels there's a problem? He said, there's no problem. Is this my husband? He saw this album, uh, Frank Edwards. And since then, he doesn't want me to sleep. He's looking for money. But he's come about it and everything. He said, like, how much? That was how money began to come in from nowhere. And I was mm. able to meet up. When I paid for that album, I came home, I rejoiced, and I thanked God. I played it over and over. Me and my children we gather together, we dance it, we play it. I say, this is the song that the whole world is going to hear. Mm. Now, when I bring it to Alaba, and all that it takes, I took it to parks, I went to all the uh, vehicle companies, I would give it to them, I went to everywhere, I said, let us uh, shoot video. And God helped us. We were able to shoot, uh, I think the first one was uh, uh, Oya. Oya, then Ogina. And you know, for us to shoot Oya then, I was still insisting on this, my son, Mama. Yes. And you're like, you don't understand. I said, you don't understand. So it was like an argument. You know, and I was like, Mama is the song. But you have gone to some event and you sang that Oya and everybody jumped and I said, no, 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 no. When I go home, as I'm driving, as I'm going anywhere, the only song coming to my spirit is in Mama. I said, Mama must be. So you are arguing with me. No, no, no. I don't want this. So it doesn't meet up to what I have. This and that. I said, no way. This Mama must be in this album. And I thank God he did. Yeah. Because the song was like spirit. The spirit of God with it. You know, I remember that after two weeks, after I raised the album, you know, I took it to everywhere. I met people from Abuja, from every part of Nigeria, Africa. I give it to them. And before you know it, it was everywhere. Honesty Music Entertainment is a complete multimedia studio registered in Nigeria. We offer complete media production, our state-of-the-art audiovisual equipment at the latest and also the best you can ever get in town. Our services include analog and digital recording, filming and documentary, live video recording and shooting, record label and artist management, talk shows and reality programs, event packaging, full event planning, marketing, media services, photography, live band and DJ services. For top-notch quality audio, video and other media production services, patronize Honesty Music Entertainment. 17 Olufemi Ojo Street, off Shasha Road, Akonwajo, Lagos. Telephone 080-230-65504, 090-285-40937. Honesty Music Entertainment, setting standards. Is that once you stay in your place of building, when it's your time, someone who matters will find. You know, when you see a hungry, someone who is struggling, and you see their low state, you can just call them humble. Mm -mm. Wait until they have money. Something. So I'm not the one that when you come and tell me, man, do you know how big you are? My response is usually, I don't know. I don't want to know. It's nothing. <laughs>